My name is Cheryl Satterwhite. I am currently affiliated with We Got Your Snacks, LLC. Uh, previously, before starting and venturing into my own business venture, I um, was working in the realm of program management. Worked for a number of top um, companies, uh, Fortune 500 companies and organizations, uh, leading programs, projects, uh, for high impact initiatives um, in the space of telecom, uh, in the space of insurance and um, new market expansion. And so through a number of years in, in that particular field, loved my work in project management. Um, in 2022, I made a decision to pivot uh, and venture out and think about what can I do and be successful and pouring all my energies into my own business. And here I am today um, as I went down that path and I'm excited to report that um, I found a wonderful opportunity. Thanks for Thoughtful Brokers and Kevin um, helping leading and guiding me uh, to this opportunity. Can you talk about the decision to seek out doing a franchise or doing the vending machine versus pooling your knowledge into doing consulting or something like that? My background in project management um, has always allowed me to be really thoughtful and methodical about my approach and things that I'm trying to accomplish. And so um, when I reached out for um, a franchise opportunity, I really didn't have a clue of what that experience would be like, um, you know, resources, um, financially, um, you know, but I wanted some guidance. And so uh, being able to find um, someone that actually could provide more insights and, hey, here are different opportunities that you can look at. Um, here are some things that have been successful. Here are some new models. Here are things that actually mirror your skill set. Here are things that uh, areas that really jazz you. Um, so all of those things came to term and allowed me the opportunity to pursue this particular initiative. Um, at first, I was actually going down another path. I was going down healthcare management. And, um, you know, when I was doing it independently, um, no one was there to guide me and really provide me insights and all that. But by going through thoughtful brokers, I got much more of an in-depth view of the different options here, the pros and cons, and being able to really, really take a deeper dive and decide what really works for me. Yeah. Can you speak a little bit more about the assessments and sort of what was teased out in that and how you felt that helped you narrow in on the opportunity? What was really helpful about that, you know, just like a regular um, personality assessment or one that you would do like a Briggs assess assessment where, you know, it can hone in on, you know, how you deal with certain situations. What are your strengths? What um, things are you passionate about? Uh, what things you don't like? Um, you know, all of those things are teased out. And it was a wonderful presented um, presentation back that, actually emulated a lot of things that I had done from a corporate perspective that kind of resonated with me. You know what? These are the things that really jazz you. These are the things that you really feel passionate about. And hey, here are some things you really don't like so much, or, you know, maybe these are areas that you're not as proficient in, and perhaps, you know, you may be guided into these particular areas. So that assessment was really helpful there. Can you speak to why you were interested in looking to be your own boss and kind of what your expectations you had for what that role would, would look like when you were choosing to kind of step out of that corporate world? Yes. Um, in, in that particular vein, when I was looking to enter into my own business, um, you know, it was at a pivotal time. I was at a milestone in my career um, through a transition. And um, I was weighing the option of going back into a corporate setting or if I was going to go into something different. 
And so, you know, I started to explore various opportunities. I thought this was a good time uh, in my career, uh, this chapter in my life to start looking at investing into myself. And what does that model look like? Um, being a business owner, um, I found it really exciting to look at a franchise opportunity because I didn't want to start from scratch. I wanted to have a proven blueprint. I wanted to have a business model um, where that would be something that I could leverage and not have to enter into those unknowns and um, be able to do that and to make that as a leapfrog into my business opportunity. Yeah, and can you sort of speak to that exploration process of figuring out, you know, what opportunity would be best and why you landed on um, the vending machine company? Yeah, um, so, you know, as with everything, it comes with uh, various options. There were three categories. And let's just, for simplicity's sake, let's just say A, B, and C, where um, there was an opportunity in category A for this set of businesses. And um, it gave you uh, more insights onto what would be the financial commitments and things of that nature. And it was a tiered approach, right? So um, when I looked at that, um, I knew about financially, you know, how much I would like to invest. Um, from a startup perspective. And um, as I narrowed that situation down, then I started to take a look at, um, okay, where's the growth opportunity here? How can I expand this particular business model? And the one thing about the franchising for vending that was really appealing to me, um, even though it is a part of a franchise, their franchise model is different from a lot of the other franchisees where there are no royalties, um, where, you know, after you make your initial investment, you become the sole owner and operator where um, you won't have to pay the, the annual royalties. So that was something that was very appealing to me on the vending side um, as a new start out. Because again, you know, every bottom line counts and you're having to cut away a piece of your pie and your earnings and pay out those royalty fees to others, then your piece of the pie becomes much more smaller. So um, that was something that really, really uh, stood out for me uh, when I entered into vending. Um, aside from that, um, through my career, I actually uh, early on had an opportunity um, in my operations area to actually work uh, in an area that had a lot of vending machines. So I knew how lucrative of an opportunity that could be. And then with these new types of machines and how things have progressed, um, it became even more appealing for me to look at this as an opportunity. Yeah, can you speak to that? Like, was there, were there different opportunities available within that? And is there a reason that you chose the model that you did or the, the program that you did? So, so one of the things um, that was just super appealing for me and why I chose it again is um, every step of the way, um, again, with my background in, in being in technology and project management, um, I consider myself to be very analytical. And so what was presented to me um, and what was laid out, a lot of the information um, the materials, the, the content, the documents preempted a lot of my questions. So um, that was exciting within itself where I didn't really have to seek out this information. It was something that was readily accessible to me during my due diligence process. The other part that was appealing was I actually had an opportunity with no holes bars where I could actually speak to people that were already in the industry before actually making a definitive decision that I wanted to enter into this business. So no questions were off limits. I had um, a number of 20 something people that I could choose to speak with and um, of various backgrounds, ask them uh, all types of questions, ask them questions about the financial models, 
you know, understanding the pitfalls and all that. So again, another opportunity, even before taking that last step, um, allowing me to do that type of due diligence and understanding the day in the life of is really, really something that is appealing and that, you know, you don't get that opportunity often to really understand that before you make that type of commitment. Can you speak to, first of all, how you came across thoughtful franchise brokers? if you had been considering doing your own kind of research prior to that and then how that shift um, from working with them, what you got out of that experience? Yes. So initially um, I was going at it independently. And again, my experience independently, and again, I can consider myself to be an astute individual and I'm going through the motions and I'm going through and having these conversations and, um, You know, I just didn't have the type of support working independently that I felt that I needed to guide me into the right opportunity. Um, That first opportunity when I was doing it independently, um, it felt more of when I would interact with something, it was more salesy in nature. Whereas when working with thoughtful brokers, um, it was never like that that. It was more of a partnership. It was more of a consultation. Um, I actually was just researching something on the internet and um, about franchise opportunities and it popped up. Um, You know, fill out this little questionnaire and then um, within a day I was contacted and um, the relationship started. Um, The gentleman that I worked with, Kevin, um, he was very, very attentive. Um, You know, it was always um, done on my schedule. Uh, There were no high pressures. Um, As we walked through the process from start to finish, um, you know, we talked about timelines. We talked about what type of commitments that I wanted to make. What did, you know, we could go as fast as I wanted to go or slow as I wanted to go. So all of that felt right to me in making um, a more informed decision. And again, the way that it was presented was um, I had various options. And then from there, I could pare those down and mirror those to, you know, my passions, my strengths, and um, to guide me into uh, about two or three various options. And then finally, I landed on the vending option. How long have you currently been in um, been in business? Like, when did everything get underway? So um, I'm a work in progress. Um, I started, and here we are, it's uh, January. I didn't start this uh, until September, late September in 2022. So um, it's been um, really pretty fast, but not fast to the point where it's not uncontrollable, right? So... Um, it's been really great. I've already had um, training through the vending program. Um, the other thing that they offer you would be um, a coach. Um, along the way, you've had all kinds of support people um, to work with you through various phases of this new initiation. Um, and from there, uh, with the coach, you're paired with um, someone to assist you with your locations, Um, to place your machines. Um, And uh, so far, it's just been a wonderful experience. I can't wait to really have my first opportunity when that machine is in place and that I start to run my vending. Yeah, absolutely. So in in this process, has there been anything that surprised you so far that's been, that was kind of unexpected? No, not at all. You know, and and that's the odd part part about it. I've actually been touting this to other people. I'm like, you know, I know there is no such thing as a perfect situation, but the way, um, you know, this is planned out, the timing of it all, um, you know, everything has been very forthcoming. Um, which I I appreciate it. And, you know, again, I had the opportunity as I'm entering into this, um, you know, review items with my own personal legal attorney and advisors. Um, So again, no high pressures there, just working through um, all the legal paperwork was very seamless um, and um, no surprises. 
what would you say to someone who's kind of on the fence right now about buying into a vending franchise and whether or not they should use a broker or kind of go it on their own if they're exploring that opportunity? Yeah. So I've actually been uh, recommending, you know what, I I think this is a great opportunity for expansion. Um, You know, the financial model model has been proven. Um, I would definitely recommend um, utilizing a broker if you are looking into a franchise opportunities. Um, There's just so much out there that, you know, you may not even consider as um, a business opportunity. And again, there are still those other traditional things that are out there that have been tried and proven. And um, again, I'm an advocate not to re-engineer, you know, work smarter and, you know, and not harder. So go with the plan um, that's something that's been tried and proven um, that will give you definitely a leg up and a leapfrog um, to a successful business model. So I know you you spoke with a bunch of people ahead of time who um, are in this business as well to kind of be able to do that due diligence process and ask questions um, about their day to day. So can you talk a little bit about what your expectations are and your understanding is specifically with this vending opportunity as far as how hands on, you know, you need to be what that's going to look like in your day to day? With that, you know, I wanted to know, OK, give me the life the day up, right? Um, how much time is consumed? Um, is there a lot in the initial setup? And there is quite a bit in the initial setup. Um, you know, like with anything, you're you're trying to build that solid foundation. So, um, whereas you know, where they typically would say you would allocate per vending machine that you purchase anywhere from an hour, an hour, fifteen minutes um, a week. Um, right now, I believe that model is tried and proven. Um, a lot of the individuals said that that does hold true as far as the, the type of commitment and their time and effort. Um, however, the initial setup does require quite a bit more um, because, you know, you're, you're laying the foundation, you're doing all of the groundwork. So those things are, you know, t- to be expected that you're, you're putting in the additional time um, as you're meeting folks, as you're prepping, as you're trying to understand your product assortment, your mix, and you know how you want your price points to be, what your margins are, um, you know, doing your uh, other setups for just readily, you know, running a business, getting your business license, getting your sales tax certificate. So um, those things you you have to put forth. Um, a much more time in the beginning to invest um, in your business to make sure that you have a solid footing um, at the beginning. Have you like quit your normal nine to five? Is this like basically hopefully going to be like this passive income that's going to sustain you? Is that what your income goal is? Or can you speak to that? No. Yeah, I can speak to that. So um, my nine to five traditionally no longer exists. Um, I do love the opportunity of being my own owner and my own operator as my own boss. And so it gives me the um, the opportunity to be nimble and flexible and um, have that type of schedule. Um, This will become my nine to five. I'm also, um, as I started my second chapter, I have another business opportunity. This allows me the opportunity to focus on this. Uh, 50% of the time, as well as my other business opportunity. Is there anything that I have mentioned or anything else you'd like to share about your experience or either with thoughtful franchise brokers or um, getting set up with your uh, vending franchise? Um, I can't speak enough about, again, how successful this model has been. Um, It's opened my eyes in so many different ways. Um, Again, just... Uh, trust the process, go into it with um, the right mindset and knowing that, you know, it's a journey. Everything doesn't happen on day one. Um, You need to be patient with yourself and um, work through the process, learn and leverage um, those resources that are out there um, to make it work for you and, and your business venture. So that would be my, my recommendation.